Wow, the James Webb Telescope has been fully deployed. If you're interested in astronomy or space, you've got to be excited about the James Webb Space Telescope. Here's why. For starters, it's huge. How huge? The primary mirror of the JWST is over 21 feet wide. The Hubble Space Telescope, the previous largest eye in space, has a mirror of about 7 feet 10 and a half inches. By comparison, if you place the two telescopes side by side, it'd be like putting a horse next to an elephant. And elephants are enormous. There's a perfect reason why the web, as it's affectionately called, is massive. It has to be huge, because it's not an optical telescope in the traditional sense that most telescopes are. The JWST is an infrared telescope. It sees heat. Infrared light has a longer wavelength than visible light, so it needs a larger mirror to focus that light. So what do we have here with the James Webb Space Telescope? We have two never-before things going on. We have incredible technology and incredible science missions. Both the missions and the technology are out of this world cutting edge. The web is a classic example of engineering in the service of science. Because of its greater light gathering power, the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to take images of things that we were never able to see before, but have always wanted to see. Things like exoplanets and the first galaxies in the universe and stars and planets forming inside nebulae. And you can bet that there'll be plenty of surprises too. The James Webb Space Telescope has several technological tricks up its sleeve, which promise to provide its greatest scientific discoveries. The Webb has a coronagraph and a very special coronagraph at that. The coronagraph is the tool that will allow the first real pictures of exoplanets. The coronagraph blocks out the bright pinpoint light of stars, which we already know have planets orbiting around them. Without the coronagraph, the starlight would make things too bright to see these planets, because planets are hundreds of thousands of times dimmer than the star. But with the coronagraph blocking the starlight, the exoplanets come into view and the JWST coronagraph can block the light from up to 100 stars at once. We can expect a swarm of exoplanets. This brings us to the next high-tech gadget the JWST has up its sleeve, a no-slit spectrograph. Usually, an ordinary spectrograph will have a slit to allow a sliver of light to enter and be diffracted. Diffraction is the scattering of light to reveal the spectrum of the light's component wavelengths. But the James Webb Space Telescope's work is so sensitive that a sliver of light would overwhelm the optics. So a no-slit spectrograph was installed. The starlight gathered from the big mirror is sent into a fiber optic cable to send only a single spot of light into the spectroscope. And that's where the grism takes over. Sir Isaac Newton used a prism to discover the spectrum of sunlight, Roy G. Biv, as you may recall. But the web uses a grism that's a compound word, like smog, which is smoke and fog. A grism is a graded prism. That means it has itsy bitsy, teeny tiny grooves that diffract the spot of light the big mirror sends down the fiber optic cable and into the spectrograph. The science of reading a spectrum of light is called spectroscopy. By analyzing the spectra of light from the exoplanets, the JWST will determine what gases are in the planet's atmospheres as well as their density and even their temperature. It's an incredible advance in our knowledge. We'll be able to tell if a planet has oxygen or nitrogen or methane and other gases that may or may not indicate that the planet is habitable. Another Earth, perhaps. Presently, the JWST is parked in its permanent location. Unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, which orbits the Earth, the James Webb Space Telescope orbits the Sun. It orbits the sun at one of the gravitational balance points between the Earth-Sun system. It just stays there without having to use much or any fuel to hold its position. So as the Earth orbits the sun, the James Webb remains parked at a spot that is also orbiting the sun. There are five gravitational balance points between the Earth and sun. They are called Lagrange points after their discoverer, Joseph Louis Lagrange in the 18th century. The Webb is parked at L2, the second of the five Lagrange points, which lies 932,000 miles out into space, way beyond the moon. All this to observe a spot of infrared light. But first, the engineers must get or acquire that spot of light. To get a spot of infrared light, the 18 hexagonal mirrors had to be unfolded from their position inside the Ariane rocket that sent the web into space. 
Once the mirrors have unfolded, their positions must be adjusted to microscopic level accuracy so that all 18 mirrors produce a single image. Several tiny motors are attached to each mirror segment to make these adjustments. These motors, which must be activated individually, will gradually pull the honeycomb-like mirror segments into alignment. It's a critical part of the mission and takes months to complete. To align the mirrors to produce a single spot of light, the James Webb Space Telescope can't be jiggling around. The telescope must be kept absolutely motionless, and that requires two other cutting-edge technologies, the sun shield and the cryo cooler. In space, direct sunlight is very hot, and shadow is very cold. Therefore, the James Webb Space Telescope brought along its own high-tech sun shield. It's huge, too, as big as a tennis court huge. Comprised of five individual layers of Kapton film, only a millimeter thick, each layer of the sun shield has to be remotely deployed individually using a system of eight motors and 139 actuators with thousands of parts. The purpose of the sun shield is to help the JWST stay cold. The colder, the better. And colder is what the cryo cooler is for. Temperature can be measured three different ways, in degrees Fahrenheit, where water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212, in degrees Celsius, where water freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. But neither of these thermometers have a starting point. So Lord Kelvin, in the 19th century, devised a third temperature scale, the Kelvin scale, which starts at absolute zero, the coldest temperature possible. The onboard cryo cooler will cool the JWST to just seven degrees Kelvin, seven degrees above absolute zero. At this temperature, virtually all heat from motors is removed, and the telescope will be able to focus the light to a point without any noise, basically any motion interfering with the quality of the image. Finally, after all this incredible technology functions remotely as planned, we are almost ready to observe the infrared images from the giant multi-segmented mirror of the James Webb Space Telescope. Almost ready. A telescope can collect all the light it wants, but in the end, it must also be able to detect what it's collected. If the light is not detected, it's not truly observed. Enter the piece de resistance, the infrared detectors. The Webb has 15 of them. The specially fabricated semiconductor material produces a slight electrical charge when struck by a photon of infrared light. The web's infrared detectors can produce a million pixel high def image. A few of the detectors can produce a four million pixel image. They must be durable enough to last 10 to 20 years without warping or corrupting, all while working at seven degrees above absolute zero. In themselves, the infrared detectors on the JWST are an engineering marvel. But what are they going to take pictures of? Ah, the missions of the JWST. Well, they're cutting edge too. 70 of the first 280 target observations are exoplanets. Is there another Earth? Which exoplanets seem habitable? The Webb Telescope will provide detailed spectroscopic analysis of the atmospheres of thousands of known exoplanets. For the first time, we will see images of exoplanets as they appear in infrared light. Cosmology, the study of the universe, is perhaps the primary mission for the web. Galaxies receding away so fast that their light is stretched into the infrared will be a prime target for observation. Hundreds of hours of observations are necessary to collect the faint infrared light from these first galaxies formed after the Big Bang. The JWST will give us a picture of what the infant universe looked like. Astronomers will learn new information about the dark energy that is driving the expansion of the universe and what role, if any, black holes play in the formation of galaxies. Star formation in the Milky Way and nearby galaxies is also part of the mission of the James Webb. By imaging hundreds of solar systems forming around newborn stars, astronomers will establish a definite history of solar system development. Now fact will replace theory and a big step forward will be taken in our understanding of space. The James Webb Space Telescope is a bold endeavor that will mark an epoch time in scientific history. An exoplanet is any planet inside our solar system. Some of them are free floating. Those are called rogue planets. They move around the galactic center. Others orbit their host star or two. For the first time, astronomers discovered exoplanets in the 1990s. Since then, scientists have found thousands of them. And now, you can sneak a peek too. 
Spoiler alert, some exoplanets are pretty bizarre. Others resemble our home planet and could probably support life. The closest to Earth exoplanet is Proxima Centauri b. It's a mere 4.2 light years away from Earth. Recently, astronomers have found out that this world might resemble Earth even more than previously thought. It's only 17% more massive than our home planet. It orbits a star that is dimmer and less massive than the Sun. Proxima Centauri b is in the middle of the star's habitable zone. This means that chances are liquid water and life might exist on the planet. It looks like the exoplanet is tidally locked with its parent star. This means one of its sides faces the star at all times, and the other is always in the darkness. Scientists haven't figured out yet whether the planet has an atmosphere. It's traveling too close to its star and completes one orbit within 11 Earth days. The radiation from the star might be pulling the planet's air away. If this is the case, Proxima Centauri b isn't likely to have liquid water on its surface. Gleiss 832c is 16 light years away from Earth. In the cosmic scheme of things, it's a stone's throw away. This exoplanet is five times as massive as Earth and travels much closer to its parent star. That's why a year on this planet lasts a mere 36 days. But since this star is a red dwarf, much cooler and dimmer than the Sun, Gliese 832c gets as much light and heat as our planet does. At the same time, it's still unclear if Gliese 832c is similar to Earth. It probably has a much thicker atmosphere that creates a runaway greenhouse effect. This phenomenon occurs when a planet absorbs more heat from its host star than it can release back into space. This means that Gliese 832c is more likely to resemble scorching hot Venus rather than relatively cool Earth. Another Earth-like planet, TOI 700d, is 100 light years away from us in the constellation Dorado. It orbits a small and rather cool dwarf star that is about 40% of the mass and size of the Sun. Its surface temperature is half as high as that of our star. The outermost planet, which is the very TOI 700d, is almost the size of Earth. It also sits in the habitable zone of its parent star. No flares from TOI 700 reach the planet. This increases the chances of the exoplanet being habitable. This means it can potentially develop and maintain life. Scientists don't know for sure the exact conditions on the surface of the planet. But one of the computer simulations they've created shows a planet covered with an ocean. It has a very dense atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Astronomers think a similar atmosphere surrounded Mars when it was a young planet. But another 3D model shows TOI 700d as an all-land, cloudless world. That's what our Earth would probably look like if it wasn't covered with oceans. Winds on TOI 700d move away from the night side of the planet and meet in the area that directly faces the star. There is an exoplanet that stands out among the rest because of its awesome magenta color. You can find this world in the Virgo constellation. The planet is called Gliese 504b. The distance between this planet and its parent star is nine times the distance between the Sun and Jupiter. The planet formed relatively recently and is still glowing with heat. That's why its surface looks pinkish. Just 20 light years away from the Sun, which isn't such a great distance when we talk about space, a bizarre rogue planet is roaming our home Milky Way galaxy. But even though this planet doesn't orbit any star, it still has an incredibly powerful magnetic field. It's 4 million times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. The exoplanet also produces amazing auroras. When it was discovered in 2016, astronomers were almost sure they had detected a brown dwarf, which is an object too large to be a planet and too small to be a star. But later, scientists received proof that the space object wasn't big enough to be a brown dwarf. The planet sure is a mammoth among its peers. It's 1.2 times as wide as the largest planet of the solar system, Jupiter, and more than 12 times as heavy. Astronomers think the exceptional strong magnetic field helps the planet produce the auroras. But the most curious thing is that they're generated in a different way than auroras on Earth. 
It might be because the exoplanet's moon helps the planet create these light shows. If you traveled 20,000 light years away from Earth, you'd come close to a red dwarf in the Sagittarius constellation. Such stars are very cool and small. Quite far away from this cold star, there's a planet. The distance between this world and its host star is so great that the planet receives very little heat. It's one of the coldest planets ever detected. The average surface temperature on the planet is lower than negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why the entire planet is covered with a thick layer of ice. If you stepped onto its surface, you'd see nothing but glaciers, plains, and mountains of ice. And still, astronomers claim life might exist deep beneath the frozen surface. All because the core of the planet is likely to generate enough heat to melt some of its inner ice. In this case, there would be an enormous subsurface ocean, maybe even swarming with bizarre life forms on the planet. One of the oldest exoplanets we know about is PCR B162026b. It's about 12.7 billion years old. It's almost three times as old as Earth, which appeared 4.5 billion years ago. This also means that the Genesis planet formed only about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The planet is so old that its two parent stars have had enough time to evolve into a white dwarf and a pulsar, making almost 100 revolutions per second. Sunrises on this planet must look awesome! I bet the next exoplanet isn't like any other you might have seen before. It's often called Super Saturn, or Saturn on steroids. That's because J1407b has a colossal system of rings. They're 640 times as large as those of Saturn. The bizarre world is 434 light years away from Earth. It's the only planet we know about that has rings similar to Saturn's. If you moved J1407b to our solar system and replaced Saturn with it, its rings would look many times larger than a full moon. Astronomers have noticed a gap halfway through the planet's rings. The chances are high that an exomoon the size of Mars orbits the planet somewhere within this gap. If you lived on this moon, you'd have an awesome view every time you looked up into the sky. This exoplanet, called WASP-12b, munches on the light coming from its star. It's one of the darkest worlds people know about. All because its day side consumes light rather than reflects it back into space. The planet is giant, twice the size of Jupiter, and it traps more than 94% of the light that reaches its atmosphere. This is likely to be the main reason for the insane temperatures on the surface of the planet. They can rise up to 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost half as hot as the surface of the Sun. WASP-12b travels so close to its host star that it needs just one day to complete one orbit. Its night side isn't as hot as the day side, a mere 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of this difference in temperature, water vapor and clouds gather above the surface of the planet. From time to time, swirls of material from the planet's superheated atmosphere spill onto its star. About 4,000 light years away from Earth, there's an exoplanet that might be one enormous diamond. It's five times the size of our planet, but needs only two hours and ten minutes to orbit its parent star. It's a pulsar rotating at a rate of 10,000 times a minute. The planet is denser than any other we've discovered so far. It consists mostly of carbon, which is so dense that astronomers think it might be crystalline. If it was true, it could mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. On WASP-76b, it rains iron on the night side of the planet, and the temperature on the daytime side rises up to 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to vaporize most metals. This exoplanet is a bit smaller than Jupiter and located 640 light years away from Earth. Such terrifying weather conditions in this world are caused by its unusual orbit. The distance between WASP-76b and its parent star is 10 times shorter than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. That's why the star and the huge planet are tidally locked. 
One side of WASP-76b always faces the star, and the other side is always pitch black. This bright blue exoplanet sits 62 years away from Earth. A bit larger than Jupiter, it looks calm and peaceful. Its blue color might remind you of our home planet. But this familiar appearance conceals the planet's horrifying nature. The beautiful hue comes from silicate atoms and particles that make up the atmosphere. But the wind speed on the planet can reach 5,400 miles per hour. That's seven times the speed of sound. The temperature there can rise up to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But this isn't the worst. In this bizarre world, it rains glass, sideways. So it's probably not the place where you'd like to spend your vacation. Dark, mysterious, cold space. Comets, asteroids, planets, stars, and something that's lurking over there, far beyond Pluto. Yup, this could be the ninth planet of our solar system, the one people have been wondering about for centuries. IRAs, which stands for the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, collected interesting data back in 1983. It could be proof that Planet 9 is hiding there. No one knows if it really exists, but this discovery helped to build a model to understand this potential planet better. And in 2016, scientists found out that some small space objects in the Kuiper Belt were orbiting a bit oddly. The Kuiper Belt is the outer area of our solar system. It's a ring in the shape of a donut, filled with leftovers from the times when our solar system was forming. You can find this donut beyond Neptune. The objects in that region of space have weird orbits, almost as if a big body with strong gravity is pushing them away. Knock knock, Planet 9 again! The theory says it might be 5 to 10 times the mass of our own planet, and up to 20 times further away than Neptune. The astronomical unit equals the distance between our planet and the Sun. Pluto is approximately 40 astronomical units from the Sun. But Planet 9, if it exists, is 400 to 800 astronomical units away. It would take 10,000 to 20,000 Earth years for this mysterious planet to make a single circle around the Sun. This makes it harder for us to catch this space body. There's a theory Planet 9 may have formed between the orbits of Jupiter and Neptune, similar to the rest of the gas giants in our solar system. The gravitational force of one of the two huge planets probably kicked it out of its orbit. Oh no! Then Planet 9 could get ejected further away from the eight planets we know about. It ended up as some sort of icy waste, quite small at the beginning. But as time went by, Planet 9 has cleared its orbit of frozen pieces of rock and dust and finally formed into a real planet. Another theory says that this could be a planet another star lost on its way while it was passing near our solar system. In any case, Planet 9 probably doesn't reflect that much sunlight since it's so far away. And astronomers aren't sure where exactly they should look for it. Space is dark, mysterious, endless, obviously. But if we do find Planet 9, it will be the first solid proof there are more planets in our solar system than we thought. Moving on to an interesting exoplanet, located only 90 light years away from us. An exoplanet is generally a planet located outside our solar system. This one has an atmosphere with water clouds. One year there lasts 24 Earth days, and the planet travels around a red dwarf star, which is way dimmer and smaller than our sun. That's why, even though the planet is 8 times closer to its star than we are to our sun, the temperature there is similar to that on our planet. This exoplanet has a size similar to Neptune. It's also less dense, which means it's mostly made of gas, unlike Earth, which is made of rock. The average temperatures there is 140 degrees, which makes it one of the coolest small exoplanets we've ever discovered. And the cooler the exoplanet is, the bigger the chance we'll find clouds in its atmosphere. Researchers have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets, but all of them have been found within the Milky Way, at least until now. For the first time, astronomers may have spotted a planet outside our galaxy. They called it M51 ULS 1. Hmm. The planet is located in the Whirlpool Galaxy, a distant spiral galaxy 28 million light years away from us. There was once a huge but pretty young star that got stuck in a gravitational dance with something that could be a dense neutron star, the collapsed core of a giant star, or a black hole. The star's dance partner had incredibly strong gravity. 
It was feeding on the star, greedily ripping away its plasma. Then something unusual happened. An unknown, maybe even Saturn-sized object passed by and blocked this confrontation from our solar system. Now, no one can see what is going on. But this could potentially be the farthest planet we've ever discovered. There's a newly discovered planet outside our solar system. As large as Jupiter, it orbits two stars. And, as we can observe it from our planet, it crosses in front of them both. The full circle around these two stars, which means one year, takes approximately 200 Earth days. On the day of the discovery of the previous planet, scientists also found it had an unusual companion. It's an extra-hot Jupiter with an ultra-tight orbit around its star. The year there lasts only 1.9 Earth days. This planet has a weirdly shaped orbit. Also, it travels in the opposite direction from the rotation of its star. If you could travel 57 light years away from our planet, you'd see something pink lurking in the darkness. As you get closer, it becomes bigger and more fascinating. Yup, it's a magenta-colored planet. A few billion miles away from its sun, this guy is one of the youngest planets scientists have discovered. It's only 100 to 200 million years old. It's made of pink gas, similar to our Jupiter. So if you could fly closer to its surface, this gas would envelop you like a thick fog. You're coming closer and going deeper, and the gas is becoming darker, getting a reddish shade. And look at the planet's core. It's super hot. Because of its high temperature of 460 degrees Fahrenheit, this planet is like an oven. The heat is the reason the planet glows so brightly. You'll also notice the sky is hazy pink, with clouds made of droplets of frozen water, similar to ours. There's another exoplanet half as massive as Earth, which is one of the smallest planets we've ever found outside our solar system. It has a diameter of 5,600 miles. For comparison, Earth's diameter is 7,900 miles. The planet in question is mostly made of iron, similar to Mercury. Mercury has a massive iron core and a very thin crust, which makes it an oddball in our solar system. At its early stages, it collided with some space body at least once. That collision pulled its outer layers away, which is why only the firm iron core remained. Maybe this exoplanet participated in a huge space crash too. That's what probably took away the planet's mantle and left mostly its iron core. Or maybe this is just a remnant of a gaseous planet that used to be the size of Neptune. The atmosphere of the planet could be blown away by, let's say, a huge amount of radiation coming from the star. This planet is only 31 light years away from us, and the day there is less than 8 Earth hours long. The planet is only a little bit bigger than Mars. People aren't likely to ever settle in that place because of its extreme temperatures that go up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. There might even be molten lava on the side of the planet that faces its star. Such temperatures are high enough to evaporate any atmosphere, so this planet might have had one in the past. Generally, gas giants like Jupiter can't support life because they have extreme weather conditions, temperature, and pressure. And there are no building blocks that might create life. But smaller terrestrial planets, such as, I don't know, Earth, have more key ingredients like oxygen and liquid water. Plus, they have more temperate weather and other conditions. And still, not all of such planets support life, of course. It's not easy to find a planet with similar conditions as the ones we have on Earth, or at least the conditions that would allow life to develop there. But meet Kepler-22b, one of our most promising findings. It's 600 light years away from us, twice bigger than our planet, and with temperatures of about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a so-called super-Earth. It's a category of planets unlike any we have in the solar system. They're more massive than Earth, but still lighter than ice giants such as Uranus or Neptune. Super-Earths can consist of rock, gas, or a mixture of these two. Kepler-22b is within the habitable zone of its parent star, which is less bright than our sun. The planet probably has a rocky core. It may have an ocean, but it doesn't host any life. At least, we don't know about it yet.